Today's video is on a bit of a touchy topic that was making the rounds on the internet yesterday. But before we get into that discussion, I want to remind you guys of something. And I'm not sure how else I can really drive this home, but I'm not here to pander to anyone if you agree with my opinion on a topic that is cool if you disagree with my opinion on a topic that is cool i don't care really either way because at the end of the day these are just my thoughts on a situation i saw a lot of people felt betrayed that i said that the star wars chick in star wars outlaws wasn't necessarily the ugliest woman i've ever seen and people were like well who got to you and it's like what is wrong with you N nobody got to me i'm always going to have an opinion on a topic and whether that opinion lines up with mass thought or it goes against the grain i don't care i am an individual through and through and i don't know how else to make that abundantly clear to you so if you're here for a right side of thinking when it comes to games you're in the wrong place if you're here for the left side of thinking when it comes to games you're in the wrong place i'm an individual i claim no sides i just have opinions but today we are talking about this tweet that has been making its rounds on the internet people are not happy the capcom localization team made a tweet talking about localizing and you know we're in this era right now of the sweet baby ink the force dei stuff and i stand by everything i said in those sweet baby ink videos i don't like that company i don't think those people at that company are good-hearted people i think a lot of them are bullies a lot of them are disgusting people who say disgusting things on social media and they're supposed to be the barometer set for what is right and what is wrong ethically so i'm you know when you see stuff like like this you automatically have this flashback to the situation and that's how this whole tweet was being taken when you read some of this stuff you find some interesting verbiage that you know probably rightfully so in certain situations triggered a lot of people and they were like oh well this is a whole nother situation just like this talking about context bridging the linguistics gap cultural sensitivity in characters characters design and development must be culturally sensitive what may be acceptable in one culture might be offensive in another localizers play a crucial role in ensuring that characters are relatable and respectable avoiding stereotypes or other references that could be perceived is negative in specific cultures inclusive language and representation oh here we go localization efforts extend to promoting inclusivity through language and representation this involves adapting not only the linguistic aspects but also addressing gender specific language cultural norms and diverse perspectives the aim is to create an immersive experience where players from different backgrounds can identify with the characters and narrative this can be very challenging for certain languages due to grammar and so on and so so forth with this and like i said people read this and they were like oh well capcom's lost their mind they've jumped off the deep end and to be perfectly honest with you when i first saw this that's that's immediately where my mind went and you know just because of this this era that we're in with games where we're seeing a bunch of things that kind of don't make sense and kind of are, are worth you know looking at with the critical eye and how you know certain things are deemed acceptable and certain things and certain characters like the you know eve from stellar blade are deemed unacceptable so we get into this whole mantra of this situation but when i was looking at this i thought a little bit deeper I thought a little bit deeper than I think some people who got emotional over this really wanted to look into because I, I, I thought about history here. And if you look throughout the history of games, this has always been happening. And that, that almost pains me to say that, but this has always been happening. When we talk about the, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, the modern games, you know, there's too much bullshit in there. We need to go back to the retro games. The retro games were just as guilty as, as the modern games. If you look at some Capcom titles, such as Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition on the Sega Genesis, in that intro cutscene where the dude punches another dude and it scrolls up the building and it shows the Street Fighter II logo, they actually changed that on the Genesis version of the game to have the character getting punched go from a black guy to a white guy. Now, it was never said why this was indeed the thing, but that was something that they did. And I feel like that's something that would be perceived to day 
as you know, you know, changing things to to hit the white guy and make it more acceptable. It's a game about fighting, so I don't really understand why you should change it, but I feel like it's not that big of a deal. And the fact that it was changed, but nobody noticed and nobody really cared, you know, why was that the case back then? There's thousands and thousands of retro games that have had things like that done. Super Castlevania 4, okay? Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo is different than the Super Famicom version. The Super Famicom version has blood dripping down at the title screen. There's lots of crosses and religious imagery. There's a statue that has a, a naked woman's breasts on there. But the North American version of that game removed the religious imagery. They, re they put a robe on the woman at hand. So Nintendo's known to do stuff like that. Obviously, during the Super Nintendo era, they came under heat for a lot of stuff like that, you know, with Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. Howard Lincoln preserving the children. But once again, that's another situation that I feel like would be something that people would be upset about today. But that's in these retro video games that we're all, you know, hearkening back to. I think that the biggest thing is in, you know, Streets of Rage 3. Streets of Rage 3 versus Bare Knuckle 3. They literally got rid of a boss because he was a stereotype of an overly homosexual dude, like leather clad, a little bit of Frankie Mercury going or Freddie Mercury going on there. And that was in the Japanese version. They completely got rid of him in the North American version kind of changing things up but then i thought got to even deeper thinking and i'm like well okay you know this obviously isn't necessarily a new thing and some of these instances that we see now would spark anger from people within the gaming community if these were brought to the forefront but obviously we didn't have things like social media and stuff like that where we could voice our concerns but how does this end up happening how are characters and things changed and what's deemed acceptable for a region and what's deemed unacceptable because when you read the capcom localization team's twitter uh post here it really feels like there's a lot of power involved in there something similar to where you know a sweet baby ink will try to you know impose their will on a game whether you want that or not and they'll bully you and harass you into doing that so I got my little journalist hat on and I reached out and I decided I wanted to talk to someone involved in a localization department, either previously or currently involved, to see where this mentality comes from, where the mentality to change something for different regions and different audiences comes from and how it happens. Because is it the people that are localizing the game that are making these decisions or is it the higher ups within the company the game developers themselves well i reached out and i ended up getting in touch with someone who worked for a localization company i vetted it it's a real localization company and they gave me a lot of insight that i want to talk about i'm basically just going to read over the questions that i asked them and then the answers that they gave me because i felt like this was a very interesting conversation that was definitely based on a lot of people's opinions with out actually thinking about what the localization departments actually do as far as you know localizing games or changing things up in a game and more importantly who decides and signs off on that so the first question I asked them was if they had seen the Capcom localization team's tweet. And if not, I gave them a link to look at it and just, you know, talk about what they noticed within it. And they said the following. The cultural sensitivity part does not make any sense. First of all, in any localization procedure, you have source text provided by the client and target text, the outputs provided by translators. The characters and settings are already baked in the source text. The translators cannot change that. We usually have guidelines and style guides, sure, but the work of those who translate is not changing the source text. Localization would not be faithful. You can have a joke that is very culturally specific. We recently worked on blank game, so you can imagine, but if you know what the game is, then you would obviously see kind of, you know, where the, where the differences lie. Let's suppose the source text has a mildly racist joke. The French translator would not change it to a non-racist joke just because racism is an issue in France. They would try to provide a translation that tries to convey the meaning behind the joke. If not, it's safe to say the client would not like it. Also keep in mind that writers are usually involved in the production stage of these games, and the localization stage is usually a later step. 
And then they asked me if that makes sense, to which I said, yes, it does for sure. What about a visual or character change, though? Like a flag for a region that another region might find offensive, or a character change or, or character change or removal, like the gay character Ash, who was removed from Streets of Rage 3 for the Western release, but was in the Japanese release. Is that something that's given from the higher ups, or is that something that's brought about by a localizer? And by the higher ups, I mean like the development team. To which they said, if you want to erase a character in a release for a specific market, you need to run the project again through production and developmental, then deliver a new source text to the localization team. So the translators would never know that they're actually working on changing the game. For translators, it's just different content altogether. Also, localization is usually text and that's it. Voiceover work then feeds from the localization text. Sometimes the client has internal reviewers that know the languages. Surely that is the case with Capcom. Konami, for example, used to have them and that was outsourced to us. So no, changing a pride flag has nothing to do with localization. So what I've gathered from this is that the localization teams are, yes, they're translating the stuff. They're looking at things like jokes things that may or may not make sense in different regions and applying them to the games themselves. But as far as being like, hey, this is something that's problematic. This is something that needs to be changed because in this region, you know, it's not acceptable. That's not something that they can actually do do that's not something they're really in charge of all of these decisions to change something for a specific region seem to be coming from the developers themselves my whole thing about forced stuff in video games is if it's being changed by outsiders telling the developers what to do something like a sweet baby ink where they're like you need to harass these developers and marketing people to have them see things your way so you get their way that's their own words not mine but when it comes to the actual localization process the thing is they really don't seem to have any power they're simply doing a job that is provided by them by a company in this case of course being capcom and capcom seems to have their own team within the company that handles the localization some companies do that some companies outsource it this individual was for an outsourced company but it seems like across the board it's always going to be the same thing the people that are involved with the translation and the localization process, they're doing the job that is asked of them by the higher ups, by the developers, by the people behind the scenes that are making the game. So I feel like, and this is just my opinion, if you disagree with this opinion, that's fine. If you want to boycott Capcom, go right ahead. Go right ahead. I don't blame you. You are your own person. You can do whatever you want. But it seems to me like this is a bit of an overreaction due to the climate that we are currently in right now where there's a high level of scrutiny and a high level of distrust i can't really think of a capcom game where i was like hmm something about this doesn't feel right and i play a lot of capcom games i mean i love my resident evil i love my monster hunters and stuff like that like i don't really feel like i've ever had an instance where i was like this feels forced. This doesn't feel natural. Something about this feels completely off with a Capcom game. Sure, there have been changes that were made in previous Capcom games, like I you know, alluded to with the Street Fighter 2 thing on the Sega Genesis, but that was such a minuscule thing that I don't really feel like anyone really noticed something like that they maybe had their reasons for doing something like that obviously you know the political climate and the you know race relations rodney king stuff happening around them maybe they just felt like that was a safe thing to do i just feel like a lot of people are giving localizers like they have this this huge this huge power and in reality they really don't have it so while it's okay to get mad about certain things, and if Capcom ever were to have a game where there's a situation where it's like, hey, something about this feels off, then of course, you know, it's something worth addressing. It's something worth talking about. I'm just saying maybe we shouldn't jump the gun with this because you got to keep in mind one thing. This isn't something that's exactly new, and it's definitely not new for Capcom. It's almost like if they didn't say something, if they didn't come out with this tweet, you know, when they decided to do it, 
I feel like people just wouldn't even notice it. And they would just be like, oh, you know, it, it's Capcom. You know, they're they're doing their own thing. I mean, wasn't IGN mad at Capcom for Resident Evil 5? Like, you know what I'm saying, dude. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And uh, unfortunately, and I say this, I say this with all due respect. Unfortunately, it's either you're with or against. Everything is woke or nothing is woke and you're just a piece of crap. It feels like the people in the middle, like myself, just get lost in the shuffle because people are just so, you know, they, they're so wanting to just pigeonhole everyone. You're you're this wing, you're that wing. And it's like, bro, be a normal person. Realize that people, different people have different, you know, ideologies and different people view things in a different way. That's what makes life worth living. If you want a hive mind mentality, you know, I guess you could find it. But I, I'm not going to be that person for you because I'm always going to have an opinion and it might not line up with yours. But I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Am I being far too lenient on a situation like this? Am, am I being too nice? I mean, think about working designs. Like you, A lot of these people that are super pissed off about this tweet are supposed to be retro people. And it's like, bro, come on, man. The retro games were butchered in some regions when you compare it to the Japanese version but usually it was within you know there was a logical reason behind it or a company just decided hey we're going to change this up for the opposite region it's it, literally there's a website where there's over 3,000 games and it talks about the regional differences within those games and this goes all the way back to the NES it, it's nothing new you know but I get it. I get why everyone is is watching with a careful eye with this. And, you know, that, that's a reasonable thing. But I'm just saying maybe not jump. Don't jump the gun quite yet. Look at the situation for what it is. And then if we get to a point with that situation, then kind of address it. But then again, you have the give them an inch, they take a mile thing. So who the hell knows how you're supposed to feel about this. But however you feel is your opinion. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Hope I didn't ramble too much in it. Um, I know I talked quite a lot. I'm looking at the timer here for this video. We're at nearly 18 minutes. But hey, I had a lot of things to say. And I did some investigative work. Maybe I am a journalist at the end of the day. Ugh, no, I don't. I don't want to be a gaming. I don't know. I had I had people tell me I was a gaming journalist, and I just didn't realize it in my anti-gaming journalist thing. But hey, you know what? It is what it is, man. I'm just a dude with a camera and a microphone. But I get it. I get it. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Just hit subscribe if you're new. Later.